Hello, everyone. Um, we are going to be talking about uh, blood and tissue nematodes today, mainly just blood, actually. Uh, filarial nematodes. So that means people can have little baby worms in their blood. This is wild. And what you see on your screen right now is a peripheral blood smear. This is not the counting area you can see by all these overlapped red blood cells. But if you have not picked up yet, on the abnormality, boom, there it is. At the tip of my uh, the tip of my pointer here, we've got a little microfilarial worm here. So we're gonna go through <clears throat> and talk about uh, microfilarial uh, infections. Mainly they're in the tropics and they are vector borne, meaning you have to have the right mosquito or fly in order to transmit them. They end up uh, being uh, taken by the insect from an infected person through a blood meal and then it gets transported uh, after some life cycle stages in the mosquito larva uh, larva li life cycle stages in the mosquito and uh, they will then give the larval stage to someone else on the next blood meal and then they'll those uh, infected uh, people will then have adults that uh, end up being matured and uh, reside in the lymphatics. And those adults uh, produce um, microfilaria and they migrate to the lymph nodes. They block them and you'll end, um, these individuals can end up with elephantitis where there is a large uh, lower extremity uh, that can be uh, the legs, the scrotum, um, you know, all the way down to the feet and everything. It is a very miserable situation for those who have it, um, but there is therapy that can happen. So we're just going to talk about um, some of them and try to identify them actually. So the first question that we have to uh, ask is if a sheath is present. So a sheath is basically an extra membrane that was uh, kept on by the microfilaria from the egg. So if you look at this, there's the tail, the tip of the tail on the left, and um, the opposite end is on the right. And is this sheathed? Yes, it is. You can see that extra layer of um, membrane over there. It's like uh, pantyhose hanging off your toe, uh, just extra really, really thin sheath. And then we have the tip of the tail over here, which includes our next question. Is there nuclei within the tail? So ours absolutely does look like it has nuclei to the tip of the tail. And um, well, I just answered the next question. Does it extend to the tip? So yes, ours does. And um, is it in a continuous line? No, ours is not in a continuous line. And uh, therefore, it's um, going to be something else instead of something else. So uh, let's go over here really quickly. There's that beautiful sheath I zoomed in for you just to make sure you could see it. Okay, so our sheathed microfilaria include a few different ones. So we have... Wucheria boncrofti, we have Brugia mali, and Loa loa, and honestly, they're my favorites. Okay, um, so Loa loa is the African eye worm, and yes, there is an, a worm that ends up being able to be seen from your eye, and you can, they have to pull it out. Um, it's amazing. Look it up. It's really, really neat. Okay, so ours have two uh, nuclei at the tip of the tail and that absolutely indicates that we have Brugia mali and so let's see I'm just going to show you a tour of the whole one it's gorgeous uh, yes we got it right wonderful job everyone uh, this is a uh, game sustain uh, so just as if you were you know looking on a peripheral blood smear uh, this is part of your looking around, you know, your 10 uh, scanning. If you don't go to that thick area, you may not see a microfilarial worm. Okay, so this is a really great, 
a really great reason why you should go around. Let's see if we can find one in a thinner area. That's the feathered edge. Where did I go? I'm on the outside. Going towards the feathered edge. Up oh, is that one right there? Let's see. No, it's not. That's a nucleus. All right. So yeah, if you if you didn't go into the thick area, you might miss uh, microfilaria, so parasites. You might miss uh, some if it's the beginning of a leukemia situation. You might miss some blasts or abnormal cells because they kind of stay in there. Um, so you always want to go to the outsides and the heavy area. Okay, so we're headed back to the heavy area. Let's see if we can find a, another one. We're still on 10. We're just scanning. Oh, well, I guess I was lucky, right? We're not seeing any more. All those white blood cells that we see, though, from the purple stainy. Okay, <clears throat> let's go ahead and look for another one. And try to identify a new one. Oh, let's see this. I bet you it's still not another one. Yeah. That's just... <clears throat> cell nucleus. Okay, let's try to find another one. Okay, I have another slide on for all of you students out there. This is just crap on your slide. That is nothing. That is not a worm, okay? I wanted to make sure to have that in the video. But see, it's occluding... It's not even in the same plane as the blood, so that's just a fiber sitting on top. All right, so we are still on 10. We are scanning our slide like good laboratorians do. And I want you to shout out when you see one. Anybody, anything yet? Oh, wow, we're in a really thick area at this point. Going towards the outside. Maybe something's on the outside. So when we... Oh, look at that! <laughs> when we make a slide, you know, we're pulling the blood across the, the glass slide, right? So um, you would think that these guys are like, Whoa, what's happening? It's like the tidal wave pool at the water park. <laughs> And they're just getting swept along, right? So that's why you would see them on the outside because they're bigger um, and in the heavy area. They're bigger. They're going to uh, roll slowly. They'll go to the outside. So it looks like we did find a friend. Okay, so let's go ahead and look a little closer. Maybe I should have just done it on my phone. That's probably a better idea. Let's try that again. All right, this isn't as beautiful as the last one was, unfortunately. So maybe we might have to go into 40. Okay, so we're going along, going along. First question, do you remember? Is it sheathed? Well, this is just really hard to tell. Okay, let's go find a different one. Actually, I'm going to find a different one. And I'll get back to you. Okay, so I found another one. <laughs> this one looks very exciting. Um, and it is absolutely where the drop of blood uh, basically started out on the slide. So we're in a super thick area. It looks like abstract art in the background uh, with the red cells. Definitely not in a good place to count or anything. Okay, so uh, we're looking at this one and we're going to ask those questions again. My phone is really freaking out trying to zoom in so let's try 40 Ooh, this is better okay yeah all right 
So we're looking at the, the head here. It still isn't really coming in super duper best focus, but you can see that, whoops, there is extra membrane at the top here at the end right there at the end of my pointer. And then as you follow the body of the microfilaria, you see this extra, extra membrane around it too. My goodness, this is hard. Uh, extra membrane around it too. So yes, this one is sheathed as well. Very good for those of you who said so. Okay, so the next question. So is there a sheath present? Yes. Uh, we said yes. So that brings us down to the next question. Do we have nuclei in the tail? I would say yes. That is the tail. I think the slide is just pretty poor. Um, yes, we have nuclei in the tail. Uh, the next question is, does it extend to the tip? So in this video, it looks like it doesn't, uh, but it actually does. Uh, I don't know why we're not able to pick that up very well. This is kind of just hard to focus on apparently, uh, but it does extend out into the tail and it is a continuous row. So who does that make this? I'm going to try to find one more just to see if we can see it a little bit better. Unfortunately, we keep having trouble there. Okay, so do you remember who the sheathed microfilarial worms were? We had the Wucheria von Crofty. We had the Brugia Mali, which we had just seen, and then we have Loa Loa. So the ones that have nuclei uh, to the tip of the tail would be Loa Loa and Brugia Mali. And the ones that do not uh, have nuclei out to the tip of the tail would be Wucheria boncrofti. So I basically just gave you the answer there. So this is Loa Loa. Honestly, this one's my favorite. I would never want to have it. Um, and I feel really horrible for those individuals who do. My heart really goes out to you. That's awful. Um, but it's, it's really neat to talk about clinically. Um, it's one of those things that catches people's attention. Okay, so there's that sheath. So this is pretty good. There's that sheath down there. And then we've got um, the extension of the nuclei to the, <clears throat> with a continuous row to the tip of the tail. So you can see that purple line looks like it's really at the bottom, but there's, there's purple all the way out. So there you can see the hole. I'm taking pictures while I'm doing this. Ooh, that's. I think it's because there's such a thick area of cells. That's why there's such a hard um, time trying to focus. All right, we'll see if we can do one more. Oh, look at these. Oh, wait, those aren't worms. <laughs> those aren't microfilaria. What the heck are those? Those are actually hemoflagellates that are protozoa. So when I said one more, we actually didn't have one more. So this is what we're going to talk about. So this is uh, Trypanosoma brucei, but it is uh, the West African sleeping sickness. So Gambiense is the, um, the subspecies. So <clears throat> this is an organism that is spread by the tsetse fly. And when it takes a blood meal uh, from the individual, it is going to um, in, insert uh, the uh, tripomastigotes and uh, 
they are going to uh, transform into bloodstream trypomastigotes, which are carried to other body sites. They multiply by binary fission in various body fluids, including blood, lymph, and spinal fluid. And um, they continue on to be uh, trypomastigotes and the tsetse fly will come and take another blood meal and uh, then uh, pick up that organism from someone who is infected and then uh, there will be some um, life cycle stages within the fly itself that then goes back into the human. Um, so I, I wanted to put this up there because they can be in the blood and they look, you know, kind of worm-esque, right? And, and they do have this undulating membrane, right, that goes along along the outside of it so i didn't want you to get confused that that is a sheath uh like what we were talking about with the um, microfilaria so let me put this on oil for a minute so that you could see it a little bit better going to take a minute to make it nice and oiled there. go. So an infection with this organism is in three stages. You have a, um, a chancre that develops at the site of inoculation. Then it's followed by a hemolymphatic stage um, and symptoms include fever, lymph adenopathy, and pruritus. And then there's um, a me meningioencephalatic stage that there's invasion of the central nervous system, the CNS, and it causes headaches and abnormal behavior. So people start to, to act a lot differently and it can lead to loss of consciousness and coma. So, I mean, it's a, it's a very serious disease. Um, they're very interesting um, and they look like I don't know. They, I, I think they look like little seahorses. I think they're really pretty. Um, so the part up near towards my pointer, the darker part is uh, uh, the kintoplast. That's the mitochondrial DNA area. And then the big um, pinky purple thing that looks like a nucleus actually is a nucleus in the middle of the organism. Then you've got a flagella um, at the end and the undulating membrane that goes all um, up and down it makes it look like a seahorse to me and uh, this is the modal stage and this is uh, what you would find in there um, this is different than trypanosoma cruzi um, those uh, have a different characteristic shape which is usually a c so uh, don't get those confused um, but yes, I wanted to make sure that you had this available uh, to see the difference between microfilaria, excuse me, versus trypanosoma. All right, well, if you enjoyed this video and you loved the surprise ending, <laughs> please make sure to like, subscribe, and uh, hit the notifications bell so that you'll be notified of any other tricky uh, videos that I'll put out there. I hope you have a great day. I'll see you later. Bye.